Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, I hope you've had a good summer um, and uh, you're fully rested and ready for the next period in the year. Um, I'm very happy to welcome you all to today's webinar and I'm just waiting for my other colleagues to start their videos um, and uh, we'll get underway very shortly. Hello, everybody. Nice to have you all here. Hello, everybody. Good to see all of you. Okay. So uh, it's just after 11 o'clock Central European time. Uh, we have an hour for today's webinar, and there's quite a lot to um, get through. Um, I can see that there's so far 144 attendees online and lots and lots of chat going on already with everybody telling us um, their answer to the question that's on screen. Um, it's actually helpful if you can uh, follow the instructions and uh, just quickly open the uh, menti.com uh, website and just answer those questions. Then we have a graphical illustration that everybody can see. Um, but uh, while we're doing that, I'll just uh, run through a quick welcome. Um, today is all about the Winder platform. Uh, yesterday, we released an update to Winder to version 3.2, which introduces several new features and functions. As I said, we've got up on the screen a survey asking you to tell us where you're from. Um, so please, uh, uh, if you haven't done so, um, just quickly fill in uh, the questionnaire there. It's just one question and you tick a box and the results are displayed on screen. The reason we're asking this um, is because Wind is a platform that unites our network in a single online space. Um, how and why you use Wind depends on whether you're a training provider, a course participant, an auditor, and so on. So um, I can see we've, got, we've had 10 more people join since I last counted, 154 people on, which is a, a fair number. Um, we've got about, I think, 60 answers there a good number of training providers, a good number of certification bodies and auditors, and fewer of the other groups, which is um, uh, reasonable considering um, the target group that we're trying to communicate with today. Um, so most of this will become self-evident as we go through the content today. But as we said, the, um, uh, the purpose of today is to run through Winda 3.2 and how it's going to introduce a number of new features and functions, um, particularly for the certification bodies and auditors group. But, um, we'll leave that up for just uh, one more, say 20 seconds, and then we'll um, jump off and I'll introduce my uh, colleagues today who have already said hello. Okay. Um, if you're putting in your results right now, it will probably be calculated and then we'll be able to show you right on, on the end. So um, let's move on. Uh, so a quick introduction to your team today. I'm Ralph Savage and we're joined today by Camilla Payerskad and uh, Søren Sajagoc. Together, Camilla and Søren are going to talk us through the key uh, changes to Winder, demonstrate some of the user journeys you'll experience and explain the reason why these updates have been implemented. Uh, our aim today is a mixture of show and tell, and there'll be plenty of opportunities for you to ask questions. Um, we'll begin with a brief introduction to Winder itself, some key highlights in terms of the new features and functions contained in Winder version 3.2. After that, Camilla is going to provide three short demonstrations for some key user groups. Uh, she'll begin with training providers, then certification bodies and auditors, and then uh, we'll also show you the basics of how uh, audits can be submitted online through the uh, updated window platform. Uh, we'll leave time for questions throughout, so please just write those in the Q&A function rather than the chat. So um, those are two separate um, uh, buttons. So if you want to ask a question, don't put it in the chat, put it in the Q&A function and we'll come to them in due course. Obviously with 176 people online, there's going to be a lot of questions um, and we'll do our best to get through as many as possible. Um, those of you who have a question that we've been unable to answer in the time that we have today, we'll do our best to come back to you um, uh, after the webinar is completed. Um, 
we're also going to point you in the direction of some uh, items about where you can find help, in particular a collection of how-to videos uh, which have been published so you can find guidance on what to do at your own convenience. Um, but now we're going to move swiftly on, on to these new features and functions. I'm going to bring uh, Søren and Camilla into the discussion so you don't have to listen to me for too long. But a quick reminder of what Winder is. It was first launched in October 26 as a platform to allow training providers, participants and their employers to upload, view and verify training records. Today, the uh, platform contains valid GWO training records of over 100,000 people from training providers in 46 countries. Uh, in 2020, the fees for uploading records were reduced by an average of 17%, aligning them with the United Nations Human Development Index. And now we're here to show you how the platform has evolved. <clears throat> so um, I'll ask you first, let's begin with this first item, which is probably the most important, the introduction of two new connected profiles. Um, it's probably the biggest change um, and everything else is connected to it. Can you just tell us a little bit about, about what it means? Yeah, certainly. Thank you, Ralph. Well, uh, when Windows launched, it had three profiles and it's maintained that uh, up until today. Uh, so you have a profile for training providers, you have one for employers, for organizations, as we call it, and you also have one for course participants. Um, the ones we've never had inside of our system have been certification bodies and auditors. And um, that's been something that I've been wanting for quite some time, and I'm really happy and pleased that we've now succeeded uh, in bringing uh, these uh, two new profiles into Winda. So uh, we now have basically the whole certification ecosystem uh, on one platform and there's no need for extra emails or conversations or, or extraordinary stuff outside of Winda. But now everything is, is being brought together and connected in uh, certification body profiles and auditor profiles. Uh, and I'm very excited for all of the stuff that we'll bring with it uh, and some of the shelf stuff we'll also show you uh, all of you today. Yeah. So the second key feature is very much about Windows 3.2 becoming a self-service platform, which is um, part of what you were alluding to there. Um, Camilla, can you tell us a bit about this new feature? Uh, yes, thank you, Ralph. Um, so yes, as Soren just mentioned, before we used to receive uh, documentation in regards of new training providers or new audits via email, uh, what is different here is that now certification bodies and auditors can upload everything on one platform and also track the current requirements, future requirements, all the pending audits, and basically manage uh, their training providers on one platform without going to additional emailing functions and, and other systems. Okay. Um... The third big ticket item is that certification bodies profiles uh, are now connected to training provider profiles. Mm -hmm. Camilla, again, what's this update for? Yeah, so uh, simply put, uh, every training provider has some certification body that uh, provides the certificates. So for the training provider to have this functionality, they, they have to be connected to one certification body. Uh, that's, that's how certification bodies and auditors can see what current certificates training providers hold, what future requirements they have. And if they don't have access to the specific training provider, they will not have this information about them. And they will not have the function of providing those audits for these training providers. So uh, simply put, every training provider has to be connected to one certification body with its auditors to have yeah. this function. Okay. Um, in a similar way to the point um, we made about keeping track of activities above, we have another self-service element. So can you tell us briefly, and I think you mentioned it before, how it was done before and what this means for users moving forward? Uh, microphone's off. Your microphone's off, sir. Well, that's how it goes when you try not to disturb and you disturb no one at all, even when you want to say something. Well, um, yes, the way we've done it so far is um, in our requirements, uh, the certification body or the auditor have um, had to send an email to info at globalwindsafety.org with the certificate and the audit report and also Annex 1. Uh, this has been a whole different process outside the system. Uh, it's not been super transparent to the training provider either what, uh, what's going on and where we are in the process of onboarding them. 
Um, so, so this new functionality should increase transparency and uh, streamline the whole process uh, of uh, uploading and, and uh, audit report certificates and, and approving train fighters uh, into the platform. Uh, so we don't have any extra steps outside uh, of window like we've had uh, up until now. Thanks, Aaron. Um, lastly, um, a change that's uh, probably of interest to training providers the most, uh, those with mobile facilities, uh, they'll no longer need to have a separate profile in Winda. Camilla, this has got some cost saving potential for, uh, for training providers. Yes, that is right. Uh, the logic of annual fee for the training providers was based on how many profiles you have on Winda. Uh, with new update of Winda, we're allowing one training provider to connect all of the facilities that they have, no matter if it's a fixed, mobile, digital, or on-site. And those training providers who have currently mobile facility profiles separately, uh, they can inform us uh, that they would like to uh, inactivate those mobile facility uh, profiles and use one profile that they have currently to upload all the course participants' records. It's important to note, uh, although that uh, only those mobile facility types which have identical address to the fixed facility type can be actually inactivated and only the fixed facility can be used. But again, this is gonna be managed case by case. So if you have, um, if the training providers have the mobile facility type right now, please contact us uh, at info and we will take care of your um, profiles. Okay. So um, we're going to move on from the key features and functions and um, show you a little bit of how it works, um, because I think it's fairly um, clear that we have some very defined user groups who are going to experience the biggest change um, as a result of this update, certification bodies and auditors, and to a certain extent, training providers. So. Um, we're going to hand over to your screen now, Camilla, so that you can demonstrate um, two or three user journeys um, and uh, provide a bit of information on, on how um, users are going to carry that out. Okay, so I hope you see my screen. Uh, what we're going to start off a uh, demonstration for the existing users. And currently we have two user, uh, three user types already registered on Linda. Uh, these are course participants, organizations, and training providers. Um, so first, it is important to note that for course participants and organizations, uh, Vinda does not change in any way. So the way you use Vinda before, this is going to be the same today. Uh, there will be some changes for the training providers, though. Uh, so first, I will quickly go through the main uh, screen uh, changes in a bit. Uh, but overall, what's changing is that training providers will not be able to create profiles themselves. Uh, this will be created by their certification bodies or auditors. Uh, training providers will also have additional information. They can see audits, uh, the ones which are completed, the ones which, which are still pending for approval from GWO, and also future requirements for surveillance or recertification. Also, training providers will see this Vimda ID. Uh, this is not important right now. Uh, this is mostly used for reporting and also for the future updates. So you will see the Vimda ID and it's gonna be something that it will be easier for you, um, for others to recognize you, but it's not uh, creating a big uh, change. And finally, uh, we are defining facility types. So uh, also when uploading a new uh, certificate, uh, on your certificate, we will know what facility type you have. And also when you're uploading course participants uh, uploads, you will also have to define what kind of facility uh, they've been training in. Uh, I do have some um, uh, print screens to show before and after so that it would make more sense. So the, for the training providers, before you have the, had this landing page where you could create a training provider right here. Uh, with the new function, this uh, function will be eliminated, so only the certification bodies will be able to create a profile and training providers will not. Uh, then once you log into your account, before you used to see uh, these five core bubbles that you can uh, use and check the functionality of window, now you will see additional two new bubbles of my audits and pending audits. 
And also you will notice uh, Venda ID right here, but again, this does not change much for you. Uh, also, when you logged into your profile, before you could see all of the accredited courses that you have with the validity period. And for all uh, training providers, there's gonna be an additional field of facility type. So for the current training providers who already have a vendor profile, you will see this field empty. And this is fine uh, because current certificates that you have on Vinda does not have information of what facility types you're in. So only the new certificates and only the new training providers will have this field filled in where it says fixed facility, mobile, digital, or on-site. Again, this is the transition period and this is nothing to be worried about. It is completely normal. And then uh, when uploading course participants data, before you have to check uh, what course uh, they participated, participated in and when it was done, uh, now you will also have to define at what facility type uh, those course, participated, course participants were at. And finally, you will have these two new tables of audits. Um, I will go into this table more in detail a little bit later, so don't, uh, don't worry about it. But here you will be able to see all of the certificates that have a completed audit and the featured requirements. And also in the pending audits table, you will be able to see uh, the certificates that are uh, in this process of being reviewed by GWO. Uh, so here you will be able to see uh, more transparent information on what's going on and, and also notify your certification bodies if you have some concerns. So these are the core changes for the existing users. Um, for the new users, I guess that's uh, the most important and the biggest change is the certification bodies and auditors. And uh, what we go first through is the creation of a profile of certification body, also the creation of auditor profile and how it is connected to your certification body. Uh, how we track auditor requirements on Window. As you know, we have a requirement of AQT and minimum two audits per year. Also, I've just noticed that uh, somebody asked that, that uh, they are a freelancer and they are working with multiple uh, certification bodies. And this is the function that we have, the auditor groups and how does it work. And finally, explain you a little bit of what is limited and full functionality on, of Window and how do you get the full functionality? What are the core requirements? So here I'm gonna be presenting on our test environment, which is identical to production, the one that you can access. But for ease of use, I have prepared some information that we can see. Uh, so first, this is the landing page of Window. And the first thing that must happen is a certification body creating their profile. So you just simply click register find a certification body uh, icon and then fill in all of the information. So that's basically contact information, address, uh, country, and also providing ISO documentation or something similar. So I have to add a file right here, uh, select what kind of uh, documentation that is. If it's not in the list, select similar to documentation and provide the number. Uh, accepting terms and conditions, data privacy, you can review that uh, at any time and click register. So once you click register, you will receive an email and with this email, you will create a password. And only after you created the password, we will receive your request where we review it and accept your profile. So once your profile was accepted, uh, you will see the screen when you log in. And this is a limited functionality screen. Uh, why is that? Is that uh, only certification bodies who have an approved uh, auditor uh, with valid APT certificate have the full functionality. So the next step you have to do is create a user and create a new auditor user. There's another button of uh, creating new certification body user. There, there's nothing special about it. It's just basically creating uh, another login to the same account. So maybe your colleague, uh, maybe somebody from your company wants to also have their separate logins, but it does not uh, create any um, additional functionalities. So you have to click on new auditor user where you have to fill in 
the information about the auditor. Again, uh, contact information, address, and then there's two uh, core audit, uh, documentation requirements. Uh, which we define in this list. Uh, so either ISO or other, and if it's other, defining what this documentation is. You can also uh, provide more if you have. And most importantly, providing the AQT certificate and also defining on the validity period of this AQT certificate. So again, this profile is being created by the certification body. So once you create, click create user, an email will be sent to the auditor where auditor has to review the profile within 48 hours, create a password, and then click submit. And only then uh, we at the GWO will receive um, a request to review your profile. So once the profile is approved, um, you will see as an auditor, identical to the certification body, this full uh, functionality of a window where you can see your profile, create training provider, uh, provide audits and see all of the pending audits. And now for the auditors, if you would click on my profile, you will see these tasks that Vinda requires. Currently we have the requirement of having an active AQT certificate. In a couple of months, we will start uh, also counting the minimum audits requirements. Uh, so minimum two audits per year. So whenever you submit an audit, uh, Vinda will recognize it and then mark this task completed. For the auditors who are working for multiple certification bodies, um, there's gonna be a sort of a workaround. You still have to create uh, separate profiles within every certification body. That means you as an auditor might have two, three or four profiles, depending on how many certification bodies you work with. And once you do that, please notify us so that we could uh, combine you in a group of uh, this one profile. Then you can easily switch between your accounts and the requirements will be ca calculated based on your entire group, but not as a separate profile. So again, if you have multiple certification bodies, uh, create first the accounts and then notify us. So yes, uh, once, uh, you have completed that. Certification body, same as auditor, will have the full functionality where you can provide audits, create training providers, and that's how you get the full access to Vinda. And then finally, I guess the most important is submitting uh, audits on Vinda and creating training providers. So what we go through right here is the creation of training provider or connecting to your existing training provider, uh, submitting audits. Uh, we have four types of audits. Uh, I will quickly run through the audit table and the pending audits table. So if you would go back to Windham. So first, um, let's say there is a new tra training provider being onboarded to Windham. And if you click on training providers, you have two options, create training provider and connect to existing training provider. Here is the list of all the training providers that I have within my account. Um, so if I would click, I create a training provider. Again, identical information that you send to Annex uh, in the Annex table, you have to fill in uh, right here. So that's contact information, address, and then provide the certificate. One important note, uh, you can upload only one document of certification. And in case you have multiple uh, documents of the same certificate, please merge them into one file. Uh, there is a number of online tools that are uh, can provide it for free. And um, if you have questions on how to use it and which ones, again, uh, we also have some suggestions that you can um, use. So once you're uploading a certificate, you again uh, select a document, you add a certificate number, and then you define what uh, modules are in this uh, certificate. Also adding which facility type there is. Also adding validity periods and uploading audit report, which is again on our website that there's a standard audit form that you can use. Uh, defining on when this audit was completed, what was methodolo the methodology and who were the auditors. 
Again, uh, please mark all of the auditors that are part of this audit because this is how Window will recognize that this auditor has fulfilled his requirement of minimum two audits per year. Uh, and then you uh, click Create Training Provider. Again, first the email is sent to the training provider where I have to create a password, review uh, the terms and conditions, and then oh, after they submit it, we will receive it and we will start the review process of the audit report you provided and also the certificate. Now, there is still a number of training providers already existing on Binda. Uh, so those training providers must have a associated certification body to their profiles. Uh, we created a transition period functionality for all of these training providers. So when you as a certification body log into uh, your profile, you can also select connect to existing training provider. Here you will see a list of all training providers that are currently uh, single. And here you can search uh, the training provider that you're looking for. And then once you find it, you can click simply a button uh, request access. Email will be sent to this training provider where they will review who you are and then accept or reject. And once it is accepted, you will see it in the list of all the training providers that you have. So that is uh, basically how you create or connect to training providers. The next thing is providing audits. So here, this is the audits table. And at first it might be a little bit big and complex, but it's very, very simple. In this table, what you can see is the training provider uh, for which you pro provided an audit. So by clicking on this ID, you will be able to go to their profile, their name, uh, by clicking on these links of certificate or audit, you can download the certificate and uh, also see, oh, I downloaded the, the certificate and also see when is the certificate valid. When was it completed? Uh, the audit was completed and who were the auditors uh, within this audit. Once there is uh, audit completed, uh, the system will initially generate two requirements depending on uh, period of the certificate. There is a requirement of surveillance and it's defined until when it must be completed and what is the status right now. Same for recertification. So once uh, there's three months left until um, the deadline, the status will change to expire soon. And once the status changed to expire soon, training providers, auditors, and certification bodies will receive a notification on their email saying that they need to provide a surveillance for this training provider. If uh, it's gonna be after the deadline, uh, the status will change to expired, and all the future requirements associated with this certificate will disappear. So there will not be an option of providing a, a recertification if you did not provide a surveillance audit. So how do you create an audit? Up above, you see that like the small uh, button right here, new audit. And here you can find all four options of audits. A certification audit is practically, basically identical to the one uh, as creating a new training provider is just here you will define which training provider you're uh, certifying. Again, uploading a certificate, selecting certificate number, adding uh, accredited courses, validity period, and audit reports, uh, the standard form of audit report conducted uh, on which date, methodology, and who were the auditors. Again, you're clicking it submit, and then we receive a notification and we start the review process. Uh, there is also a surveillance audit. It's pretty simple. Again, you just select the training provider, select for which certificate you're uh, doing this uh, surveillance audit, and upload the audit report. And then again, click Submit, and that is it. Uh, Recertification is a little bit bigger. Again, selecting the training provider, select, selecting which certificate you're recertifying, adding uh, a certificate, the number, and what are the accredited courses. For recertification, valid from date will be pre-selected by Vinda uh, based on the certificate that you have selected. You only have to uh, add a date until when it's uh, valid. And again, uploading audit reports, who were the auditors and audit methodology. And finally, uh, an extension audit. 
let's say uh, the training provider decided to add one more credit course uh, to their certificate. And when I select the certificate, Vinda already recognizes what is here and uh, they will only allow you to add extra, but not changing the existing ones, which are already here. Uh, you also have to select valid prom dates, upload audit report, and click submit. So once uh, this has been completed uh, and approved, you will receive a, an audit right here, and there, there's going to be a record shown here. For all the audits which are still pending, we have another table. If you go back to your home um, profile, you can click on pending audits. And here I can see that I already provided two audits that are still pending for approval from GWO. And we have two different statuses. So once you create an audit, it will be initially uh, marked as requested. And you can view what you typed in here. You can see what you selected, but you cannot edit anything that, that is here. Uh, but let's say there was some missing information and uh, we decided to not approve it yet. We will uh, put this certificate to a pending st status. You will receive a notification with information on what needs to be updated. And you will get uh, an access to resubmitting this audit. So then you can basically edit what is provided here. Add a module, change dates, provide new documentation. And you can even reply on what you actually did with this new change. You will also see the information that we provided. Let's say right here, I already entered some information saying, please update your audit report. And if you forgot, and if it's been a long process of this audit approval, you can see all the long history of the communication that was happening before. So if you reply, it's gonna have a, appear here. And that's how you can track the, the process of approving this audit. So these are the core changes. Of course, there's gonna be uh, uh, minor changes for those who are already existing on uh, Vinda for those training providers, but more information we have on our YouTube channel where we created um, an extensive amount of uh, YouTube tutorials explaining on how to. And if you want to find it, simply you go to YouTube channel, type in Global Wind Organization. Uh, you will find our account right here. And then you can see um, all the videos that are on our channel. So in these videos, you will see that there's uh, tutorials for mostly all the functions we have in Vinda, such as connecting with existing training water, how to manage user profiles in Vinda, and et cetera, et cetera. We also combine that into playlist uh, for auditors, for training providers, for certification bodies, uh, where you can see a playlist of all tutorials that are needed uh, in here. And finally, you can also use our uh, website where you just uh, click on menu, find Winda, and here you have more information for all of our users. So these are the core changes. And I guess now we can move to questions if there are any yeah thank you camilla um i've been um uh, doing two things at a time listening to you present and also watching the questions as they come in um i've jotted down some questions where there's more than one of the same kind of um question coming in and i think in certain cases you you have referred to what would be the answer but we may need an opportunity to review um, some of these. I'll start with uh, an initial question that goes back to um, training provider profiles because we talked about mobile facilities being allowed to be managed on a single profile um, uh, attached to a fixed uh, site. Um, one um, participant asked, um, does a training provider with multiple uh, fixed sites still require separate profiles? Yes. Uh, basically, every profile is... Um has to be defined with an address. If there is a different address, that is a different profile. Only those profiles which have an identical address, they can be connected into one. Mm -hmm. um, and then there were a lot of questions that were coming in, some of them before you explained, but the connection between certification body profiles and training provider profiles is obviously mm -hmm. a, a new thing. 
and and um, I think um, a lot of the participants are just trying to get their heads around what the stage process is mm -hmm. in terms of who instigates this. How does mm -hmm. a training provider become attached to a certification body, mm -hmm. um, and perhaps you know what? Okay. How might that manifest itself? Okay, so there's two options. We have the existing training providers right now on Vindam. So uh, the process in general, what how it, how it will start is, first of all, certification body creates its own profile. Once it's approved, a uh, certification body creates auditor profile. Once auditor profile approved, then certification body goes to connect to existing training provider and puts a request. Once a training provider accepts, uh, this training provider will appear in their list of um, and this is going to be, for this certification body, these are going to be his, hers uh, training providers belonging to their profile. Mm. There's also an option for a training provider if they want to change a certification body. This is also possible. And again, they have to notify us and then we can change from one certification body to another. Second option, again, creating a profile for certification body. Uh, once it's approved, creating an auditor profile. Once it's approved creating a training provider profile. So it's kind of the same as we have it right now today. Whenever a certification body is uh, filling in this annex table, so this annex table is a pyramid window. So you don't have to provide a document, you just have to have enter the same information on the, the platform. And that's how you get a new training provider uh, on your profile. Yeah. So and anything to add on that point? No, I, I think from my side, that captured it quite well. But of course, if, if, um, if somebody has more questions to, to the process, then please let us know. I think one th um, point, just taking this forward, and again, Camilla mentioned it a little, but um, we've had a few questions in from certification bodies who see themselves as, as playing quite a, a bigger role in this, administering on behalf of several auditors, for example. Um, so can a CB um gain overall administrator access for several auditors for example how, how might that work for yeah. them uh, and i can actually show it to you um let me just share my screen again um so if yeah so now i logged in as certification body and i have my users right here and in this users list i can see a certification body account in order to users account so right now i can see that i have three different uh, auditors and in case uh, for this auditor there is a need to update an equity certificate because it's, because it's becoming expired i can uh, provide a request for gwo of, of updating this profile uh, in the above section, these changes do not require any approval from GWO. And above, below section, uh, we need to review that. So let's say uh, this Janet needs uh, a new equity certificate. I would probably find a new certificate. We'll change the dates that are starting, let's say, 22, 25. Uh, upload an explanatory document. So just simply explaining that this uh, auditor has completed a new training and got a new certificate, um, uploading a document and providing a uh, reason for change. And then click update profile. And then we will receive this uh, requ uh, request and then we will review it and we can um, uh, change the information about this auditor. So basically you can manage all of your auditors. It's important to note that uh, we would know that these are auditors are existing and these auditors do have equity certification, but uh, some certification bodies will not, never need an auditor to do anything on Vinda. So you can administrate everything yourselves. Mm. Um, and you've, you've already mentioned what might take place if a training provider wishes to switch their certification body. Um, and perhaps we could just uh, remind everybody that that's still possible and what might might happen. Yeah, it is still possible. What we are going to do is, since you're going to go to a new certification body, probably will need a new certificate provided by this new certification body. And once you have that, uh, you would need to inform us that there's a requirement to change a certification body. And what we're going to do is just we're going to upload a new certificate of a new certification body 
And all of the existing certificates that you have, the previous ones, uh, will be either transferred or uh, changed by the new certificate. So again, this is not a function that you can do yourself. This is going to be something that uh, we, GWO, will manage, but in from us uh, via email, and we'll take care of that. OK. Um, some quite specific questions, but there's a, a small theme emerging questions in relation to stage one audits um, and how that the provision of stage one audit documentation plays in this process. Perhaps you could just clarify um, how a stage one audit would be uh, included in um, uh, the auditor's current process. Um, so sorry, you could probably also expand a little bit more on this, right? Yeah. Well, um, the, how to use this is not specifically related to stage one. So once you complete stage two and all uh, all of the documentation is ready and the audit is completed, that's when you go in and create the uh, the uh, training provider profile. So there's no specific step in this process that requires involvement from the stage one uh, audit. Um, yeah. So the one very specific question was, is it required to send uh, or upload a stage one audit documentation? No, no. Okay. Uh, all the stuff that, that's part of that, uh, or part of the full audit report needs to be uploaded for review uh, by, by the team here, uh, but that's it. There's no separate process for the stage one portion of the audit. Yeah. Um, uh, a very sensible question. Window 3.2 is live as of yesterday. Um, is it running in uh, parallel with an older version of the system? No, the older version is not alive anymore. It's changed with the new, mm -hmm. new operating system. Um, another um, sort of collection of questions that's coming in is, is um, related to um, GWO's response time. How quickly, what sort of um, expectations can people have uh, if they follow the steps that we've described um, you know, what kind of um, experience that they're going to have uh, having seen audit reports submitted and, and processed. Sarah, maybe you can give us some insight on that. Sure. I mean, if there's no, uh, we have a service window of 48 hours to respond to inquiries received, uh, be that by uh, email or, or in window. Uh, so we will uh, uh, do our best to respond within those 48 hours uh, from first request. Um, as for audit reports, uh, they are also assigned and reviewed um, uh, within those 48 hours. If there is no uh, follow-ups or anything further to them and everything is as per the audit report template, they will simply just be accepted and uh, that will be reflected in the window uh, immediately after review. Of course, I mean, is, questions is, to it, then we will need to in initiate a, a discussion or, or find out what, what, what needs to, to be completed before we can finish the review. Is the reality that um, the, the process that's being undertaken by GWO in terms of approving documentation and um, ultimately granting certifications, um, that hasn't really changed? It's what we're doing is implementing a new platform where that information is being submitted, right? Yes. So, so even the, the principle has not changed, but the way we're doing it is much more streamlined by having it all in window, uh, which would uh, also... Uh, uh, provide a, a quicker turnaround, so to speak, because we don't have to go into multiple systems now to, to handle and review these reports and annexes and so on. Everything is gathered in one location. Mm. So it should certainly be quicker, not slower. Yeah. Okay. So over time, maybe we'll be able to um, provide a bit more insight onto uh, how this uh, new system has affected the process. Um, okay. Um, I'm just scrolling through um, many, many, many more questions. Um, one um, auditor mentioned that they were attacked they were a freelance auditor they were attached to several certification bodies Camilla I think you mentioned a scenario about how this can work but maybe we should remind uh, people of, of that yeah um, so first of all you need to have um, uh, separate profiles within every certification body that you're working with um, provided that they have to have separate email accounts uh, within every certification body uh, profile you're kind of becoming a user within this certification body. So once you have created this, let's say four profiles with four different certification bodies, you have to notify us and provide uh, details on which accounts these are. You can basically just send your Vinda ID, which you can see on the upper right corner. 
uh, and then we can combine you in a group. And once you're going to be in this group of four profiles, then you can uh, simply just switch the account and based on uh, which certification body you're working with, upload that audit report. And then also the requirements for you as an auditor will be counted not per profile, but let's say that uh, on this profile you have to upload two audits and this profile two audits is gonna become eight audits a year. Um, but we will calculate based on a group. So within this group, you have to provide two audits a year and have an, one AQT uh, certificate valid. So that simplifies it a little bit. But of course, once you create these four profiles, you have to notify us uh, so that we could add you in one group. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's quite a, an important um, uh, change and, and one that recognizes the prevalence of, of freelance auditors working for multiple certification bodies. And also that we have to reflect that if they're meeting the requirements, um, but there's a potential for them to you know, only do one audit for one company and one for another, that might leave them at risk of um, appearing not to. Um, so this makes sure that, that that's never going to happen. Um, a couple more questions before we um, provide a few bits of information uh, on next steps and resources um, for you to um, access at a later stage. Um, obviously, there were one or two questions early on asking if this webinar is being recorded. It is. Um, I believe you'll receive a link to the recording in a follow-up email, but if not, then it's going to be published on our YouTube channel, which is the um, site that Camilla uh, linked and showed you earlier on. All of our webinars are um, on there, so um, if you uh, have anything particular in relation to GWO training standards that you need to catch up on, then that's where you'll find all of that content. <clears throat> um, so... Um, Again, just uh, a few uh, urgent sounding questions from um, uh, people saying, is this being implemented right now? Um, and we've already said, Windows 3.1 is now not live and Windows 3.2 is. Um, so maybe we could just talk about what the implications are of that in general. Um, so and maybe you could um, speak from the point of view of a training provider who you know, is, is coming up for an audit or perhaps it's their first ever audit. Um, yeah. So for existing training providers, um, they don't have to do anything until their next scheduled surveillance or recertification audit. Uh, but when that is coming up or if that is coming up in the near future, uh, they certainly need to uh, get a hold of the certification body. Uh, if the certification body hasn't already signed up to Winda, uh, then have a chat with them about signing up for a profile both for the certification body and then also for, for the auditor as Camille covered before, and then uh, connect to that training provider. Uh, and then all the systems will be in place and the training provider can see their upcoming audits and the certification body can also upload all reports and, and do all that in the system. For any new uh, training providers, uh, certification bodies and auditors, they will need to register in Windows first uh, before we can onboard the training provider. Uh, as you saw in Camilla's uh, demonstration, the option for training providers to register in Winda no longer exists. So the certification body will have to do that before they send the Annex 1, like you said. Now they do all that information straight in Winda, and that is actually the training provider registration. So whenever a new training provider needs to uh, be uh, audited and uh, onboarded to Winda, the certification body will have to be registered as well as the auditor and then follow the process uh, that Camilla just uh, demonstrated here. Mm. And um, I, I guess to illustrate that fact, there have been 60 or 70 new training provider certifications this year um, and probably an equal number of recertifications or, or surveillance audits. So, you know, we're, uh, I can speak from working with you guys uh, in the operations and compliance team that there is a steady flow of these, um, these processes ongoing. It's likely that right now during September, um, there will be pending surveillance audits and uh, recertification audits coming up. Um, Ila, maybe you could put the um, graphic back up on screen um, and we can just see how many um, certification bodies are here as a reassurance to know that they're, uh, they're all paying attention. Um, we're doing our best to make sure that we communicate. Um, so we've got 25 at least um, people and obviously by the questions that are coming in, lots of questions from auditors and certification bodies in the timeline here. Um, 
Uh, and we at GWO are communicating directly with um, certification bodies in our own contact list to um, emphasize the, the, in some cases, urgency of this situation, because if there is um, an activity, a pending surveillance audit or recertification that's coming up, um, it will need to take place on the new platform. Um, so we're going to just step away from the um, questions now and come back to some points where we round off um, what sort of next steps you can take. Um, and we will be repeating some of the messages that we've just been talking about. Um, so we'll quickly summarize and um, uh, provide just some additional steps. So um, as, as I mentioned before, they depend what type of stakeholder you are. But firstly, we wanted to remind certification bodies and auditors the system is live. It's where certification takes place and where all the process is carried out and you will need to create a profile. Uh, this means if your calendar has a recertification or a surveillance audit coming up, it's very important to go through the process of signing up for that profile and learning the platform. Uh, equally, if the situation is not so urgent, uh, there's no audit activity coming up, remember to still give yourself time in your own planning to incorporate use of this platform. And I think that's a message that, that is universal um, so if you're a training provider and you're looking to appoint a certification body, um, you, you, you'd be welcome to inform your certification body and ask them, you know, how much do they know about the fact that they have to use this system from, from here on. <clears throat> and a little reminder of those resources. Um, so we're recording the webinar. You'll receive a copy of this um, either, I think, on email or via the YouTube channel. And uh, several how-to guide films have been created um, and placed into playlists, um, depending on your stakeholder groups. So specifically for auditors and certification bodies or training providers or participants. Um, and that gives you a way to learn the system in your own time. And uh, the, the guidance articles on the website, as um, uh, Camilla has shown you, and um, you can just visit globalwindsafety.org slash winder. You'll find all the information you need. Or, and last but not least, the GWO Help Desk team is available five days a week uh, between eight and four o'clock our Central European time. They're always ready to answer your questions. A very dedicated and skilled team they are too. Um, so um, we're going to um, finish up pretty soon. Um, I might just grab one or two um, more questions, seeing as we've got five or six minutes left. And I don't want to leave people feeling like they've not been given value for money from us. Um, so uh, just a really sensible question from a training provider again, and it's one we've talked about before. As an existing training provider, um, says one participant, should we be reaching out for, to our certification bodies to create a new window profile? Um, and also a supplementary question, until both profiles are merged, can the training provider use their former profile to upload records? Um, you're talking about the previous mobile facility uh, profile. It, it doesn't yeah. refer to mobile facilities, okay. it's just... Um, uh, those two questions. So should they be reaching out to the certification bodies? I think we've already covered that. But the second Definitely. question is, is uh, until um, their profile is um, created and merged or, or with attached to their certification body, can they use their former profile to upload records? Yeah, they, they can still use the window profile as before. Uh, they can still upload course participants data, uh, same as they did before. Although they will not have a possibility of receiving audits such as a surveillance audit. And if they do not have a surveillance audit uploaded, uh, then their certificate will be inactivated. Therefore, they will not be able to upload those records anymore. Mm. Uh, so uh, coming back to the first question, uh, yes, please contact your certification bodies as soon as possible. You can also share the webinar uh, recording as well as YouTube tutorials. Um, I believe it's uh, pretty, pretty uh, straightforward on how to create a profile. And those tutorials covered that pretty well. Um, so I suppose there should not be a problem for certification bodies of doing so. And even today, we have already certification bodies uh, creating their profiles. It seems to be working fine. Uh, they, we have no issues so far. 
Um, so hopefully it uh, stays like this and, and the process should be smooth. Okay, um, just one last question and it's reasonably technical, but it's in connection with, uh, I think a training provider who uses the API to mm -hmm. attach um, their process to uh, Winder. Um, the inclusion of a new data field facility type uh, what's the impact on between 3.1 and 3.2? What effect can this user expect, if any? Okay, so there's two, two ways. Either retrieving data from the database or uploading new data to the database. So API that we currently have for retrieving the data works fine. You won't just get this additional field of facility type. Um, unless you need to, then uh, we are uh, in the process of updating our uh, API documentation, which should be uh, pretty soon, um, later, at the latest October 1st. Uh, but for those training providers who are uploading records uh, using API, there's gonna be an issue. And you, you will have to upload the records within this month through when that platform. And starting October 1st, we will provide an updated documentation for the API so that you could also include new query of uh, adding a facility type. Okay. Uh, so for the time being, this is a kind of a transition period. It might be not so uh, smooth, but uh, hopefully we will update you pretty soon. Mm. And any questions in connection to that, um, please get in touch with us and uh, We'll do our best to assist you. Um, but I think Camilla's answer explains that we should have new documentation available for in time for 1st of October. Um, but on that note, I'm going to um, say thank you to the two of you and also Ilaria, who's hiding behind the scenes, uh, managing all of our screens for us. Um, and also to the 200 of you uh, who participated today, Thank you very much for joining us and um, please do get in touch. Those questions that we were unable to answer, uh, we'll do our best to get in touch with you privately um, and uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Um, don't forget that uh, on the 1st of October, as is normally the case, GWO will be launching uh, two new training standards, uh, the Control of Hazardous Energy Training Standard and two new modules to the LIFT uh, user training. Uh, plus, uh, we'll be providing one or two reviewed documents uh, from the existing portfolio. Um, so visit our website to um, access links to register to all of that and uh, uh, make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter so that you're uh, kept well informed of what's coming up. Um, it's going to be a busy autumn. Huh? Um, so uh, we we'll look forward to uh, seeing you again and uh, Please get in touch if you've got any more questions. Thanks very much to everybody and uh, see you soon. Have a good uh, Wednesday, Tuesday. Thank you. All right. Bye. Have a nice week. Goodbye. Bye.